Welcome back. Housing, of course, continues to be a hot button issue for many Canadians. The federal government recently said it would stop charging the GST, the goods and services tax, on construction of new rental housing, hoping that that move would accelerate construction of new units. Our next guest, however, is skeptical about how effective that move will be. Ron Butler is a mortgage broker at uh, Butler Mortgage, and he joins us right now. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, this move got a lot of attention by Ottawa. It was applauded by some governments. I believe the government of Ontario applauded the government for removing the GST on construction of rental housing. How effective do you think it will be? It's helpful. It's obviously helpful. It's something that should have been done eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. With financing costs for new construction being what they are today, roughly triple what they were 18 months ago, it's just hard. It's hard to get those projects started. Mm -hmm. Until financing costs come down, I don't think we're going to see a vast effect of this change. But it's beneficial, there's no question. Uh, you're talking about interest rates then. When you refer to 100%. financing costs, you're yep. referring to the same interest rates uh, that people are grappling with when they want to buy a home. You're saying it's also more difficult for builders of homes to do their business. The math just doesn't work out for them. Uh, high mortgage rates for development means that these projects don't pencil even with the uh, effect of this uh, positive reduction. Are, are rental units different in any fundamental way from, let's say, condominium units or, or single-family homes in this regard? Absolutely. Although the, the impact of high, high mortgage financing costs, high development costs, affects all areas of that business. But what's different is you don't have a sale point at the end of the purpose-built rental construction. There right. is always right. going to be a REIT or some other entity that takes it over once it's finished, but it's not about the possibility that it could go a lot higher in price. Mm -hmm. You build a project, you retain some of the condos in the tower, you can make a little bit of extra money. That's just not true in this case. Uh, how concerned are you about uh, mortgage rates from the point of view of uh, prospective home buyers? What's that going to do to, to, to demand? Well, we've experienced in the month of September another significant rise in fixed rates. Bond deals are up again this morning, and they have that direct impact on mortgage rates, particularly fixed mortgage rates. So, yeah, it's becoming possibly going to be one of the slowest Septembers we've ever experienced in the last 25 years in Canada in terms of home purchase. Uh, these high interest rates plus the stress test at 2% mean that people have to qualify for a mortgage in the 8% range. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's almost unmanageable for anyone. What, what, what is, that sounds like a, a big hit to demand. Oh, it will be a big hit to demand. I mean, we're seeing listings pile up. We're seeing people cancel uh, showings. Realtors all across the province and in parts of British Columbia, right across Canada, are talking about a growing concern of just how slow this market's going to be. Is that going to bring prices down? Eventually. Eventually. I mean, there's a, a tug of war between uh, sellers who thought they should get a certain price and buyers who no longer want to take on that price. So... We're going to eventually see capitulation, but not today. What about uh, homeowners who need to renew their mortgages at, and, and will do so at significantly higher rates than the last time around? And that's thousands and thousands a week in Canada. So, yes, the rate is nearly double, uh, maybe in some cases higher for those who had variable rates. And there's no end in sight uh, with this recent move in bond yields across North America. It's unlikely we're going to see any real reduction in the next 12 months. And that is a blow when you're looking at double or two and a half times the interest you used to pay. How is all this playing out in the condominium market with the pre-bought condos? This is a real area of concern. Uh, you've got people who simply will not have the ability to close on the transaction. It doesn't make sense anymore. It's, it's not a, people are not able to get the mortgage with that high a qualification rate thing is, when you buy five years ago, you didn't have any expectation of this. What is that going to do to condominium prices? Would I be right in saying that condo prices are a bit more dynamic, a bit more immediately responsive to, to shifts in the market? This month, we've seen tremendous dynamism in that area. Uh, there is a lot of volatility. There is a lot of action. And it would appear that prices are going to move down fairly quickly. So it's a big question, but what, what should governments be doing then to increase the supply of housing, which everybody seems to, to agree is, is just not keeping up and may not be possible uh, to keep up with the growth, the growth in the population? It certainly isn't keeping up. There's no question of that. Uh, what has to happen? Ultimately, 
mortgage rates have to come down. Ultimately, interest rates have to come down. Uh, this is a key driver. The other concern is in Canada, we seem to be obsessed with bureaucracy and red tape. Uh, Peter Gilgan at Mattamy made the great comment that in Texas, he can get housing approved in three months. Yeah. It's three years here.